Imagine a world where you are judged not based on who you are, but on what others outside of your control have done. Imagine a time where bigotry, hate, and discrimination becomes the norm. Imagine a world where your values are questioned and misunderstood. Unfortunately, this is not a world that needs to be imagined. It is the world we are living in today. Murfreesboro is a great place to live and work. But there are a lot of things going on here that weren't going on a, a year ago. Everybody knows who's trying to kill us, and it's like we can't say it. A long way to go. Why are they building a mosque of nearly 53,000 square feet? I didn't say to hate them, I'm just saying we don't need them here. Freedom! Neighbors were outraged that something of this nature was being basically shoved down our throats. Hey! When you first heard about the new building, what was your reaction? It was a dream come true. What did it feel like when that sign had not welcome? It makes you think that, you know, everyone is this way, that everyone is coming out to get you. Does it feel like people are in a war with Islam? Yes, there's no doubt. Tuesday, Robert was a It's like the rest of you queer bitches. It's a of the the arson, it was really the worst feeling that I've ever felt. And I looked at the site, and um, tears started to come down, you know, it's why. What did we do? We have filed a lawsuit to stop the building of the mosque. Is Islam a religion? In my opinion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They have a belief in a deity, an afterlife. Now you say an afterlife, is that like when you yell all the hot bar and blow yourself up and a bunch of people that you get seven virgins? Is that the afterlife that you're calling a religion? Do you think people hate you? No, I don't think so. I think that people don't understand what Islam is and that what Muslims are. I think we're worried about our American way of life. It's my right as a human being, it's my right as an American citizen to have a place of worship. It's my right to be able to worship. I know that this statement sounds extreme, but I'm not shrinking back from its implications. The fact is that America was founded, I'm going to stagger you right now, America was founded in part with the intention of seeing this false religion destroyed. And I believe September 11, 2001 was a generational call to arms that we can no longer ignore. I will counter respectfully that what some call extremists are instead mainstream Muslim believers who are drawing from the well at the very heart of Islam. It is said of Ishmael and his descendants in ancient times that they would live by the sword and he was a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand will be against him and he will live in hostility toward all his brothers I suggest that this is the spirit that has come to fill Islam or perhaps that Islam encompassed from the very beginning we are heading toward an historic conflict. Islam is growing rapidly and is becoming more violent. America has historically understood herself to be a bastion against Islam in the world. Now America is engaged in conflict with Muslims at home and the far from battlegrounds of Afghanistan and Iraq. History is crashing in upon us. What makes the conflict with Islam so desperate is that Islam is not just another belief system at odds with Christianity. Islam is not just another belief system which is at conflict with America, or Christianity. It's not just a set of superstitions or practices that people do in the privacy of their own homes that never bother anyone else. Islam instead is a faith that fully intends to conquer the world. 
Islam is an anti-Christ religion that intends through violence the to conquer the correctness world. in our society won't let you say it. They make fun of people who speak out boldly against Islam. But I want to say it again and again and again. Islam is not a religion. It is a political system meant on, uh, bent on world domination not a religion it masquerades as a religion but the religion covers a worldwide attempt to exercise power and to subjugate the world to their way of thinking they want a caliphate as uh, they had once before they want all people to be subjected to sharia and to live under their rules and their domination uh, it is every bit as insidious as communism, perhaps more so. But to say, well, it's a religion, you should leave religion alone, that's just not the way it works. It is a struggle, and, and Bernard Lewis is one of the most eminent scholars in the world on this subject. And uh, we appreciate his clear-cut thinking on the matter. But for those who don't have any faith, let me tell you, what they're going to do to you uh, will be more horrible than anything you can imagine. And you'd better understand that Christianity is the way to freedom and not to slavery. This other thing is the way to slavery, not freedom. President Obama is a Muslim. Muslims are trying to enforce Sharia law in America. And the missile defense logo is evidence of Obama's submission to Sharia. Also, a community center nowhere near Ground Zero is a kind of triumphalism that we should not tolerate. In our third story on the countdown, the Center for American Progress has released a report illustrating how fear of Muslims is manufactured and fed to the American public and who's paying for it. The study is entitled Fear, Inc., The Roots of the Islamophobia Network in America, and it details how seven foundations contributed over $42 million over the past eight years to fund and create hatred towards Muslims. Donors Capital Fund, almost $21 million. Richard Scaife Foundations, nearly $8 million. Lindy and Harry Bradley Foundation over $5 million. Russell Berry Foundation, a little over $3 million. Anchorage Charitable Fund and William Rosenwald Family Fund, nearly $3 million. Fairbrook Foundation, almost $1.5 million. Newton and Rochelle Becker Foundations, about a million. The center says the donations are used to fund rallies, create flawed reports, and subsidize Islamophobic writers and bloggers. The vast majority of these donations going to organizations led by five key pseudo-experts. Frank Gaffney of the Center for Security Policy, David Yeshalami of the Society of Americans for National Existence, Daniel Papes of Middle East Forum, Jihad Watch's Robert Spencer, and Steve Emerson of the Investigative Project on Terrorism, frequent TV guest. Gaffney and Robert Spencer being two major figures who were mentioned in Norway shooter Anders Breivik's manifesto. Sometimes we feel powerless to make a difference in this complex world. Here is your chance to respond to the call and help make your community and its future a better place. The Center for Peace has taken on the responsibility of bringing the truth of Islam and the Muslim community based on the same values that we should all stand for. It has focused on consistently breaking down the walls of stereotypes and misconceptions away from the minds of the public. The Center for Peace is working on developing new programs for the near future. Our regular programs such as the Open House Invitationals, United We Stand Peace Initiative, Film and Focus Screenings, New Muslim Support Network, and our free Quran distribution, as well as our regular presentations at other faith-based civic and academic institutions are still ongoing. These programs as well as Center for Peace and Mosque Tours have led to a better understanding and awareness to the truth and facts about Islam. We know there are many groups with great causes that are calling for your attention to help. And you should. But also consider the state of our world related to how discourse and disagreement has become very toxic and violent. At the Center for Peace, we believe that education and building bridges of understanding between diverse groups is the answer by engaging one another of our differences and focus on our commonalities to heal and grow from. However, we cannot maintain this commitment without your financial investment. This is an opportunity to live up to your ideals as a Muslim American with the virtues of equality, liberty, and freedom for all come into place. 
We must work together to rid our world from bigotry, hate, and extremism. We sincerely hope you feel that the Center for Peace has and will continue to offer the highest level of professional programming. If so, please consider a special one-time monthly or sponsorship donation today. Your gift helps provide the best programs related to dispelling stereotypes and misconceptions about Islam and Muslims.